this is a beginner's guide to print and cut and this is episode two of this particular series so episode two is going to focus in on design and the basics of design to get you off the ground so in part one of our webinar series let's just click through here um, we went through a few essentials so when it comes to software there's a platform that you need to, to be using firstly to run any sort of software and that's your computer and to run design software in particular you're going to need something that's kind of fairly powerful so it has a decent cpu internally um, which is kind of the computer's brain as it were um, and then you're going to need a decent amount of ram as well which is the computer's working memory so that's the platform that you're then going to run your design software and your rip software from which are the boxes that you see in here. Um, when it comes to design software, we're gonna go into a bit of detail as to the different types that you can get and why you might use them. Um, RIP software is the software that follows on afterwards, uh, after the design software and looks at all of your design information and converts that into a language that your printer can speak. So those are kind of three bits that you're, you're definitely gonna need to get you off the ground. So just moving through here, one of the core concepts that you guys are, are gonna want to know is bitmap and vector. So some of you on the call might already know this, um, which is great. If you don't, the difference between bitmap and vector, so bitmap is what you can see on the left-hand side here, and that means that the images are being constructed from pixels. So if you imagine you take a photograph on your mobile phone, particularly say, for example, when uh, mobile phones weren't so good at capturing pictures, then what you might find is when you try to blow that picture up, you start to get the pixelation, which is what you can see on the E here on this screen. So it's been blown up beyond the point where it would still look correct, and you start to get that kind of stepping, as it were. Um, the beauty of the vector format is that it's infinitely scalable. So you can see here that our image on the left-hand side has been converted to what we can see on the right-hand side over here. <coughs> and when it's converted into vector, it's converted into a series of dots which are then connected by lines and these can be straight lines curved lines um, whatever shape really um, and the beauty of that is that it's infinitely scalable so if you have a logo for example that you have designed and you need to pop it on a business card equally you want to pop it on the side of your van on the side of a building etc um, then you can scale it to do that the beauty of vector when it comes to designing for print and cut is that all of these shapes that you can see here in these paths these can be specified as cut lines. So if we wanted to put a cut line around the outside of our design here, we've got a shape there now that we can work with to do that. Now in this instance, this is quite a complex graphic with a lot of gradients and a lot of colors, hence the all of the shapes that you see. Um, so what we would need to do is look at merging those shapes in order to create one cohesive cut line around the outside. And that's something that we're gonna cover in Coral and Illustrator as we move through. So that's the kind of key difference between bitmap versus vector. Bitmap constructed from pixels, vector constructed from dots in a digital space, connected up by lines, which allow you to create paths. So now we know the difference between those two. There are different programs that work with bitmap or vector or both. So common programs that you're gonna see used for print and cut design are Illustrator and Coral Draw, and that's what we're gonna delve into in this webinar. Um, they're, by only, they're by no means the only programs that are out there though as well. There's lots of others. You can get things like Affinity Designer, which is quite new and quite good value. I've heard a lot of good feedback in relation to that. Um, you can get sign specific programs, so things like Sign Lab, which helps simplify some of the core processes that you're gonna to see today. Those are available on the market as well. Um, and the reason Illustrator and Coral Draw so popular when it comes to print and cut design is that they can work with both bitmap and vector information. So um, if you imagine, for example, you're trying to create a t-shirt for some heat transfer material, and when you're doing that, the design you're trying to create is for someone, and it's a picture of their nan, and it's got text above it that says, best nan ever and then it's got a cut line around the outside. So that's gonna be a blend of bitmap and vector information. Bitmap being the image of the person's nan, best nan ever is gonna be uh, text, and then the cut line around the outside is also gonna be um, vector information as well. So if you created that in Illustrator or Coral, um, then you, you'd have the flexibility to work with that afterwards and create your print, print and cut job. With Photoshop and Coral Paint, they're slightly different packages. So they're designed for working with pixels. So if you want to create um, a composite, for example, of uh, a few different images, or you're looking to do something um, that just involves working with photos, then Photoshop or Coral Paint are fantastic. However, where they lack when it comes to print and cut design is that you can't work with that vector information. So you can't program in those cut lines in those particular software packages. The other thing that links into this as well is file formats. So 
EPS and PDF are the most commonly used formats that you'll see in the industry, and that's because they can save both bitmap and vector information. Um, so when you're working in Coral and Illustrator, that's gonna be the most common output from there, which then goes into your RIP software package, ready to be, ready to be printed. And so because you can save the bitmap and vector information, it preserves all of the content that you've designed. If you were to save into JPEG or TIFF formats, which are bitmap only, then all of those lovely cut lines that you've designed in will effectively be flattened and they won't get pulled through into your um, RIP software package, ready for, ready for printing and cutting. So just moving through again, another core concept that you guys should know just a little bit about, and, and we can go into more detail in, in future webinars, and there's lots of other information out there, but the core difference between process and spot colors. So these are the swatches that you're going to see me use a little bit of today um, in both Coral and Illustrator. So process colors are usually made up from cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, or red, green, and blue. Um, because we're working with print, we'll just focus on cyan, magenta, yellow, black for now. So you can create up to a million different colors with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And that's primarily done through the cyan, the magenta, and the yellow, or, or exclusively done through the cyan, magenta, and yellow, I should say. Um, and so when you're thinking of kind of old school printing presses that were creating newspapers or magazines, for example, they would mix the cyan, magenta, and yellow to create the content and the pictures that you would see. If you had Coca-Cola come along and they wanted to, um, for example, have you print their red as an advert, you'd have had to mix up an additional color and print that in specifically. And that's kind of the origin of spot colors. So when it comes to the digital realm on working with spot colors, either it can be to do a particular color output, which is what you can see in some of the swatches down the bottom here, or it can be to do a particular um, function. So for example, to do um, tell your machine to do a cut, tell your machine to print white or print gloss, for example, print primer. So dependent on the configuration of your machine, those spot colors can have a different effect. The other thing that not a lot of people know is that when it comes to specifying cut lines, you have both the opportunity to do a normal cut, which cuts through the top sheet of your vinyl, but you can also do a perforated cut, which will go through the backing sheet as well. And there's a particular spot color that will allow you to do that. So that's process versus spot. And now the final thing just to cover off is a bit of a learning pyramid. So I quite like this particular format because it helps you think about the structure that you're going to need in order to learn a new platform and kind of build from the ground up. It's, it's hard to, there's, there's quite a few of you on the webinar here today, so it's hard for me to know what kind of level you're at at the moment. So you might know some of these things already, um, but we're going to kind of come at it from the angle of you're brand new. Um, and these are some of the things that will potentially help you out. So the bottom layer here to, to help you get started with any design package, you're going to need to know how to navigate that package. So that's in terms of kind of zooming and panning around in there. You're also going to need to know where the, the kind of key windows and tools are as well. Um, learning some shortcuts can be really beneficial, particularly when you're learning a new platform. It's a really good time to embed those in and ensure, ensure that when you're working, you're using those regularly. Uh, makes your workflow a lot quicker. Um, Working with layers can be really helpful, particularly when working with print and cut, and hopefully you'll see that exemplified in Illustrator and Coral um, and see the benefits of that. Knowing a little bit about file formats, which is what we've covered off already, so bitmap versus vector, um, and the formats that you're gonna be saving out into can help as well. Um, and knowing how to load swatches, so more specifically, how to load the swatches from all the VersaWorks swatches, which will then tell your machine where to cut or where to perform a perforated cut, for example, as well. Um, and the good news is I did a, a, a couple of five in five, so five tips in five minutes, videos and they're available on our Facebook channel for both Coral and Illustrator and that covers off all of those key points there so we'll touch on some elements of those but for you guys that are brand new and want to go a bit more in depth those videos will hopefully help you out. So the next tier here as well we've got creating shapes so when it comes to creating a really basic cut line if you imagine a traditional sticker just a circular sticker um, to denote a circular cut path is, is really quite easy and it's just a case of using one of the shapes in Coral or Illustrator and then assigning a particular color to that, which I'm gonna talk you through. So we're gonna go through creating shapes to create basic uh, stickers. We're then gonna cover off merging shapes, so how to glue a couple of shapes together in order to create one outline. Um, so that gives you more flexibility then to create more complex cut paths. We're also gonna talk through how to create bleed. So when it comes to creating bleed, it's particularly important because 
every print and cut device has a tolerance and the Roland ones are amongst the very best. However, you find because there's heat applied to the vinyl, there's ink going down on it, for example, you're always gonna get a little bit of movement over the journey of your, your print, particularly if it's a longer run as well. So if you can design with a bit of bleed, that ensures that you don't get those white edges around the outside of your design and instead they're nice and crisp once they're weeded off afterwards. And the final thing that we're gonna cover off just from a really basic perspective is vectorization. So when I talked through bitmap and vector just a couple of moments ago, and we had bitmap on the left and vector on the right, the image on the right-hand side had been vectorized. So it was a case of um, the computer program looked at the pixels that are in there, assessed what those would look like in terms of shapes, and then created those for us. So we're gonna cover that off on a very basic level. And the reason this learning pyramid hopefully will also be helpful is because this webinar is just a beginning point for you guys. So you can go away and Google some of these terms, hopefully in your respective software programs, and then look to build out on what you've learned today. So without further ado, let's jump in. I'm gonna start with Illustrator and then go into Coral afterwards. So this is the document that I mentioned earlier that happy to share afterwards. So if you wanna drop us an email um, on academy at rolanddg.co.uk, um, more than happy to share this so you can work through the exercises yourself as well. So the first thing I'm gonna go into is just a couple of basics. I'm just gonna zoom in on this square over here. Um, to zoom in, I'm just using Alt and the mouse wheel, and then I can pick an area that I want to zoom in on and just do that from there. If I then want to pan around a little bit, I'm holding down the space bar and just then using my left hand click to move around like so. So a couple of the basic bits when it comes to designing cut lines that you need to know. So you need to know where to find this particular spot color. So this one's called cut contour. Um, and when you're using the cut contour, that means that your machine will then see that that is, is a cut path. So, so that's important to know how to open that up. The other thing that you need to know is the weight of your stroke. So when it comes to working with shapes in Illustrator, it has a fill and a stroke. So if I zoom in a touch here, on this particular color, the fill would be this pinky magenta color, and the stroke is the black line around the outside here. So the stroke when you're working with cut lines needs to be 0.25 in weight, and you can specify that at the top up here. So where we've got stroke at the moment, that's one point, and we can slim that down to 0.25, and that just helps with the accuracy of your cut. So in order to open up our Roland VersaWork swatches, the way we do that is go to Window, Swatch Libraries, and then Roland VersaWorks in here, and it's opened up in the middle. I'm just gonna pop that over to the right-hand side here. So in Illustrator, all of this area is configurable. Um, the bar that's probably gonna be your, your best friend when working through Illustrator, and you'll see me use this quite a bit, is the properties bar on the right-hand side, and also this section up at the top here. So they tend to be kind of smart sections, I guess, within Illustrator. So as you work to select different parts, they come up with options in relation to that. So I'm just gonna move a couple of things out of the way. One moment. It's just where I've got the webinar software. It's just, just in the way of a couple of bits that I needed. Okay, cool. So that's now out of the way. So we've now got our swatches open over here. Um, so we can denote our cut path as the cut contour. And if I hover over the top of that, it should tell me, he says. Oh, it's not gonna do it. But it, it, that, that one's our cut contour. And our stroke weight is 0.25 that we're gonna work with. So in terms of drawing cut lines, there's quite a few different ways to do that. So if we start firstly, we could work with the pen tool. So if I specify that over here on the left-hand side, I could also use P, which is the shortcut for that. And with the pen tool, I can draw nice straight lines from one point to another. I can also look at curving though. So if I click and I hold, I can start to drag that out like so. There's a few other shortcuts as well in Illustrator. So if I hold down Alt, it allows me to move this little nodule here over to here and allows me to work with the line a little bit more and start to specify my shape that I've got there. So you can work in a kind of freehand way, I guess, with the pen tool to draw out your uh, cut line. And now Joe did a video, which again is available on our social media, which is five tips in relation to the pen tool on Illustrator and takes you into a bit more depth on that. There's also a great game out there as well called um, Bezier.method, uh, I believe it's called. If you Google that, it will come up and it will take you through step by step learning the pen tool 
and we'll take you through various levels. We're also running a competition at the moment as well in which you can win a voucher. Um, so feel free to, to give that a go afterwards and have a look at our Facebook for that. Um, another way in which you can draw your cut lines is that you can work with shapes. So here I've got a couple of logos and at the moment these are in a bitmap format. So if I zoom in on these, oh, they're fairly high quality, so you might not see that breakup. If I zoom in on this one, you can start to see that breakup around the outside there. So if we want to do a cut line around the outside here with shapes, we can work with the shapes that we've got on the left hand side. So I'm going to specify uh, an ellipse. And when I'm working with an ellipse, if I hold down shift, it will keep the proportion. If I don't hold that down, it allows me to create more of an oval shape. So let's just hold that down there. And if I hold down space bar, it allows me to move this around. So if I wanted to create a cut line just around the outside here like so, I could do that and release it. So now we've got that path that runs around the outside. We just need to specify that as a cut line. Now, fortunately, because I already selected my stroke earlier as the cut contour, that's specified over here. If I hadn't done that, I can just drag and drop it from here and drag it onto this one, which is our stroke around the outside. This one is the fill over here as well. And I can drop that down to 0.25. And now if I was to save that job out into either a PDF or EPS format, it would be ready to go and it would have a cut line around the outside of it there. The other thing that I mentioned that we were going to do is work with shapes, but combine them in order to create a bit more of a complex cut path around the outside. So with this one down here, if I start off by drawing my circle, so I'm just holding down shift here as I draw and pop that around there okay cool we're happy with that one at the moment this is going to cut out around here and we're going to lose this little bit of our design in the center there so if i instead swap over to the rectangle tool now i can create myself another shape in here and just pop that around the outside like so and we've now got our two shapes so at the moment if we wanted to cut this the machine would cut through here and it's also going to cut here as well. So it's gonna, gonna mess up our design. So to combine these, let's just select the two, and then I'm gonna use the Pathfinder button here to push that together. So the particular preset that I've used, you'll appreciate that that's a little bit wonky as well. It's not the most perfect design, but that's okay. Uh, so let's just select these two again. So I'm using Shift to then click on the second one and then I'm using the Unite function. So with Pathfinder, there's quite a few different variations. You can stamp one shape out of another, um, for example. And again, there's lots and lots of tutorials on YouTube, which will go into more detail on that if you want to do so. So let's just push those together. And now we've got a cut line that runs nicely around the outside and also avoids the business name section through the center. So let's just zoom out and move on to our next little section over here. So. What we're gonna do this time is create some bleed, but we're gonna do that inside our text here. Now, again, the purpose of doing this is just so when you're doing a print and cut job and you come to weed it afterwards, you don't end up with like a little white line around the outside. So let's firstly introduce layers, which is what we've got on the right-hand side over here open. And if they're not open already in Illustrator for you, you can open them through window, and then drop down to layers over here. Now, this particular design file has been set out so the layers are separated already. So I've got a background layer, which I if I turn everything off, you can see my background here. And all of these elements at the moment, I've got a little lock next to them, so they're locked in place and, and can't be messed with. So if I try and drag over the top of these, I can't move them. I've then got a CMYK layer, which has got our text on there, and it's got our little flower logo on the right-hand side. And I've got a cut lines layer, which is where I've been doing a little bit of my drawing so far. So let's just pop these back in. So when working with layers to create a bleed, what we would want to do is firstly select our text. And at the moment, you can see that that's on our CMYK layer here because our little red node appears. To copy and paste that onto the cut lines layer, if I just hold down Alt and click and drag the little node over, it will jump up. And now I can turn the CMYK layer off and you can see that we've still got our text here. Now, at the moment, we, this won't be a cut line. So we need to remove our fill at the top up here and we need to pick our spot color as the stroke. I'm just gonna do that by dragging and dropping 
my cut contour color onto the outside over here and I'm going to make that 0.25 in weight. So now this is a, a cut path and if I put my CMYK layer back in here so my print design you can just about see that the cut path runs bang on the outside of that black shape. We want to look at bringing that cut line in. So turn the CMYK layer back off in order to bring that cut line in, I'm just going to select it firstly. And then there are two ways that we can access this particular function. Either we can go to object, path, and offset path, or we can go to effect, path, and offset path. And what offset path allows you to do is take your exi existing path and then create something that either sits outside or inside that. And you can specify the measurement for that so you could do two millimeters, three millimeters, 10 millimeters, whatever you'd like to do. So when working with the effect option, your original shape stays in place, but effectively it's either projected inwards or outwards. And that will make a bit more sense in a moment when I perform this. When you use the object option, it actually creates a new shape, which is bigger or smaller than the original. So let's use the effect firstly. So effect, path, offset path. And you can see here in my preview, this has already come up and it's three millimeters around the outside. We want to go inside. So if I use minus instead and I pop two into that, what we should find is that now updates. And you can see that we've got our cut line sitting inside our original shape. I'm going to say I'm happy with that. Usually two to three millimeters is absolutely fine for most jobs. Let's just click OK on there. And this is what I meant earlier. So it keeps your original design point. So if I select on here, the outline technically is still here, but it's being projected into that spot there. And that's where the cut line is going to sit. So now when I pop the CMYK layer back in, you can see there that we've got a cut line and that sat neatly inside all the way around. And that means that we're going to get a nice accurate cut and it's going to weed really nicely afterwards as well with no white edges. Now, another way that you may look to create bleed dependent on your design is outside of where your text is. And this can be particularly handy if you're looking to create stickers, for example, or if you're looking to do a perforated cut. So we're going to start with the same process that I did before. So we're going to select our text and we're going to copy and paste that over to our cut lines layer. Again, just by holding down Alt, clicking on this little nodule here and dragging it up to cut lines. Turn off our CMYK layer. Now, you're going to see the beauty of working with layers, particularly in this example, um, because it, it helps simplify things, essentially. So I'm going to select this here and I'm going to firstly remove our fill and I'm just going to specify this as a cut path around the outside and make that 0.25 in weight. Cool. OK, so this is our cut line as it stands at the moment. I'm now going to navigate into object. Path and offset path and for this we're probably going to need something like 15 millimeters because it's a fairly big design i'm going to push it around the outside oh maybe that's a little bit too much a bit overzealous there let's try something like 10 instead okay cool so you can see there that we've got our original text uh sat in the inside and then we've got these shapes that have been created around the outside and at the moment, these have got mitered edges. And when you're working with that type of edge and you've got lots of them uh, and, and those, those are your cut lines, um, then it can mean that you end up with a bit of a jaggedy effect. And it's a little bit more um, taxing, I'd say, on, on your cutting blade. So if we change that to round, it smooths off those corners quite nicely. So I'm going to actually let's just make this a bit bigger just so I can really show you the example. Okay, let's go back up to 15 millimeters and click OK. So now we've got our original text and these new shapes that I've created around the outside. At the moment, these are linked together. So if I try to move one, it moves both. So what I want to do is right click and just ungroup those. And I'm going to go in and just delete the original text here in the middle. So this is going to look like a little bit of a mess at the moment. You're probably thinking, what's he doing? So let's delete all of these out of here. And now if I select all of those lines and just pop them together, using the unite function under pathfinder which shows itself in the properties window push those together here and we've now got a cut line that goes around the outside if we didn't want this portion in here which often you don't you can use the direct selection tool which can be used for selecting nodes to select them and just click delete now i did a little trial run earlier and it probably looks like on your screen at the moment there's a section that's missing along the top i just want to show you that that is there 
So as I zoom in, you can see that it's there. It's, it's something to do with the preview. So if I bring the CMYK layer back in here, we've now got a nice cut line that runs all the way around the outside. And that looks really effective, particularly if you use a perforated cut or you've got a tricky logo with lots of intricate parts, just creating that kind of, um, I guess almost like halo effect around the outside allows you to specify a cut line without having to do anything overly complex. So the final thing that I'm gonna show you in Illustrator is vectorization. Now this is just gonna be really basic vectorization. So you can see here from the logo, I pick something that's just black and white. Um, and that's just for simplicity because it tends to trace trace best. Um, if you're working with something that's got lots and lots of shapes, so for example, a complex logo, a coat of arms, something like that, it can be trickier to vectorize. That's not to say that it can't be done, but it's just for the purposes of this particular tutorial, I wanted to keep it really simple. If you wanna go into more detail on vectorization, there's lots and lots of tutorials on YouTube that you can follow up with afterwards. So I'm gonna select my image and just to prove that this is a, a JPEG at the moment, as I zoom in, you can see that it starts to break up there. So you can see that pixelation. So just zoom back out. And to turn this into a vector, we use an image trace function. And either you can do that up at the top up here or on the right hand side in the properties window, or you can go to window and image trace and open up a little tab, which gives you more options for the tracing in there. We're gonna keep it simple. So I'm gonna use this drop down here. And conveniently, there's a nice preset in here called black and white logo. And that sounds a lot like what we're working with. So we're gonna click that one. And so what the computer is gonna do now is have a look at the pixels and try and work out where the shapes should be for this particular design. So it's done that nice and quickly. If I now click expand, we can see now if I hold down the space bar that it's actually created this series of nodes in here which are all connected up. So it's created all of these nice paths for us, which is great. So just checking we've got the original there underneath. Um, so we've got all of our nice paths there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just ungroup this because it's also traced the white information. So this bit around the outside here, it's just a white box. Let's delete that. Let's also delete this portion in here as well and just delete the centers from the letters in here. Oop. Cool, we've deleted all of the bits that we want to. Great. So now if I select this, and if I remove my fill, and I then go in and specify my stroke, that's this pink color here, just drag and drop that one over, make it 0.25. We've now got a cut line, which marries up with our bitmap image underneath. So as I zoom in here, what you'll see is because of the way it's read the pixels, actually at the moment on this side, it's fine and we've got a touch of bleed. But when we scroll over here, actually the cut line sat outside a little bit. So we can still work with that. So to do this, let's just go turn off the CMYK layer. We can use our offset path function again, just to bring that cut line in a touch. So if we go to effect, path, offset path we're just going to use minus half a millimeter in this instance just to bring it in a touch and click ok cool and bring our cmyk design back in so now when i zoom in you can see there that we've got a nice cut line that sat inside our design all the way around and that's ready to go that's ready to be to be a print and cut job um, so that's everything that i'm going to show you in illustrator for now um, and I'm going to jump over to Coral next. So you can see there that we've got the same the same file. Um, to zoom in and out in Coral, so to, to navigate around, you can use just your scroll wheel to go in or out. And if you click and hold in the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can pan around like this, which makes it nice and easy. So let's just tuck into the basics again. So how to get our cut contour and how to assign the correct stroke weight for our paths that we're going to use afterwards. So um, in terms of accessing the cut contour, the good news is with Coral Draw that it's all pre-installed. So you just navigate up to Window and go into your Dockers and then open up something called the Color Palette Manager. And this will open up all of the palettes that you've got available on your particular machine. In here under Spot, you'll find a folder called Roland. And then there's a library called Roland VersaWorks. So I've already got it open on the right hand side of my screen over here. If the eye wasn't showing like so, it disappears. So we just click that one in. And then we've got our cut contour. 
we've got our Y and a couple of others in there as well. So let's just close that off. So that's how to get your swatches up firstly. When it comes to working with um, strokes, in Coral it's slightly different. So we work with a 0.25 stroke weight in Illustrator. In Coral we work with hairline. So if I just start to create a line, so I'm going to use the Bezier tool in here which is on the left hand side and it's just an alternative name for the pen tool. So if I start drawing in here and connecting these up, and again, you've got all sorts of different functions. If you hold down control, you can do a bit of a curve, for example. And again, you'll find lots of tutorials online that will help you with using the pen tool to specify a cut path. So once we've got our line there, we can set the stroke weight up at the top of our screen here. So at default, it's 0.5 uh, points, and we can make that hairline instead. So if we wanted this to be a cut line, we've got it selected as hairline. A great feature in Coral is that if we want to select a color as our stroke, we simply right click it. So I've right clicked it in there, and now that's our stroke around the outside. So that would perform a cut in that particular area. So moving on to the next little ones over here. So again, we're gonna use similar tools. So you'll find, you'll find a circle tool and a square in Coral. So let's start off with our circle or our ellipse, which is F7 if you wanted to know the shortcut for that. In Coral, it's slightly different. So to keep our circle nice and uniform, if we hold down Control, that will do that for us. And in order to move this around, if I hold down the right click as well as the left click, we can do that. So let's just drag that around here and we'll say, OK, we're happy with that. Simply right click on our cut contour, ensure that it's hairline in terms of the uh, width. And that's now a cut line around the outside. So that's that's a really basic cut line. We're now gonna do a similar thing, but for the business name logo instead. So let's just select this around the outside there. Control. And I'm just using the right hand click to drag that around. Pop that one in place. Great. Now we're going to move on to the rectangle tool, which is F6, if you wanted to use the shortcut. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle in here as well. So let's select those parts. OK. So let's just select those two bits. And I'm going to right hand click on my cut contour to specify those as cut paths. And I'm going to make it hairline once again. And I'm just going to use this function up at the top here, which is called weld. So it's the same as the Pathfinder Unite function that you have in Illustrator, um, but it's just called Weld in Coral. So let's click that button in here. And now we've got our nice cut path that runs around the outside there, which is made from a combination of a couple of shapes. Again, you can do that to your heart's content. So with a print and cut device, it can cut pretty much any cut line within reason, as long as it's not too jaggedy. Um, you can combine the shapes in lots of different ways to suit that type of cut line creation as well. So that's a couple of bits to get us started. We're then going to do an inside bleed and an outside bleed in here as well. So again, I'm working with layers in this particular document, but you find them in a slightly different place in Coral. So I'm going to go to Window, Dockers, and then Object Manager. So these are our layers, but they just look slightly different. So in Coral, you've got a master page and you've got the page that you're working on. The reason for that is because if you're creating something like a booklet, in your master page, you might have a design that has a header and footer, for example, which is consistent throughout your booklet. We're just going to minimize that for now because we don't need to work with that. We're just going to work with page one, which is the one that we're working on at the moment. And you can see here we've got our background, our CMYK layer and our cut lines, the same as we had in our Illustrator document. And so let's just ensure that we've got all of those layers on. And the first thing that I'm going to want to do is just ensure that we've got a copy of our text here. So I'm going to hit Control C. It's just going to think for a couple of moments. It was doing this when I did my did my little test run earlier. Just have a quick sip of water. Still just doing a touch, I think, in there. Okay, cool. And I'm just going to paste that onto my cut lines layer up here. Okay, so now we've got a copy of that on both layers. And the first thing that we want to do is just remove our fill again. So if I left click on this one here, which is for no fill, and I right click on the cut contour color, that's now a cut line around the outside. 
we need to look at shifting this cut line inwards to ensure that we create that bleed. And the function to do that in Coral is called Contour. So if I go to Window and Dockers and then navigate down to, oh, he says, Effects, there we go, Contour. And that now opens up on the right hand side. And it's it's fundamentally the same as Illustrator, but just looks slightly different. So on here, rather than using plus and minus numbers to specify inside or outside an area, you have options for either to center, inside, or outside along the top up here. So we want to go inside. We want to do that by, let's say three millimeters in the first instance. These corner options, again, are the same as the ones that I showed you in Illustrator. So you've either got mitre, which means they join at a nice right angle, or you've got rounded corners, or you've got a final option of beveled corners as well, which will just kind of square those off a little bit as well. We're going to keep that as mitre for now. And on here, when you use this function, you end up with uh, both an outline color and a stroke color. So to select the outline color, I find the easiest way to do this is to click the drop down click the little color picker and then pick up our color there. In terms of the fill, we want that to be white. So let's just click apply on here. Oh, that seems to have messed up there a second. Let's just try that again. So to inside three millimeters and click apply. Ah, three steps. That's my bad. Okay. So we need to specify just one. We need to specify just one step rather than three. So we've got one step, three millimeters. Then let's click apply. There we go. We're all good. Okay. So now we've got our two separate lines. We've got our original line around the outside, and we've got where we want our cut path to be. So if I right-click this in here, I should have an option to break the contour group apart. So that means it's going to separate the outer portion and the inner portion. So let's right click and do that. And now we can go through and delete that outer portion. And when I go into the object manager, if I turn back on my CMYK layer, we've now got our text and we've got a cut line that sits inside like so. So in a couple of steps there, we've quickly and easily created that. So the next thing I'm, I'm gonna show you is how to do a cut line around the outside of some text. So again, same principles that I showed you in Illustrator. Um, but just using the tools that Coral has instead. So again, first things first, and it, it might take a couple of moments just to think through this. I'm going to copy what I've got on this layer, and I'm going to paste it onto my cut lines layer so I can work with it. I think my computer got out the wrong side of the bed this morning. I do apologize. Or maybe it could have done with some extra caffeine first thing. Okay, so let's just paste that onto the cut lines layer. So the good thing is in Coral, when I use Control V to paste, it pastes in exactly the same place. So hit Control V on our cut lines layer. And now when I turn off the CMYK one, you should see that we've got the same thing on the other layer as well. We're gonna take the same steps. So we're gonna left hand click to remove any fill, and we're gonna right hand click to specify a cut line. Check that that's hairline up at the top up there as well. And then we're going to use the contour, but we're going to go outside rather than inside this time. So click on our contour. We're going to go outside. We're going to go, let's go 15 millimeters just so we can really see it. And then I'm going to also round those corners off there and click apply. So now we've got that shape that runs around the outside here. In Coral, it looks a little bit tidier as well because it's looking at the text as a whole, which is great. So I'm just going to then right click and break the contour group apart. Delete our original text. If we wanted to delete these additional nodes down here, we can use this shape function, which is kind of the same as the direct select in Illustrator. We can select those and delete them. And now when we go back to our object manager and just click that one back in, We've got a nice cut line that runs all the way around the outside of our shape there. Okay, so final one, we're on the home stretch here. Let's just, okay, pop that in the middle. So I'm gonna take the same thing again that's on our layer here. Hopefully this might be a touch quicker to copy. 
and then I'm going to paste that onto my cut lines layer. Okay, cool. We're all copied up. Let's pop that onto our cut lines layer. So now I'll turn off the CMYK one, just using that little eye, and we've got our um, file in here. Again, just to prove this is a bitmap, as I zoom in, you can see that the, we've got the degradation there. So we want to trace this bitmap. So to do that, I'm gonna select it firstly, and then we've got an option up at the top up here called trace bitmap. And in here, we've got again, a couple of different presets. So we've got a quick trace option, which will just quickly trace it, or we've got options in here for different different types of design. We're working with a logo, so I'm gonna go outline trace and I'm gonna click logo on here. And the cool thing in um, Coral when you do this is it comes up with this preview. So on the left-hand side, we've got our original bitmap file. On the right-hand side is what's gonna happen when it's vectorized. And we can work with this and we can adjust some of the sliders if we want to improve the quality of the trace. Again, I'm not gonna go into loads of detail on that. There's more about the technique. So if you want to follow on, There'll be lots of great tutorials on YouTube to help you do that. So we'll just say that we're happy with this for now because we've got the main portions of our design traced. We can see that there's a couple of bits here that it's picked up that we're just going to need to delete afterwards. So let's click OK. And we've now got our file. And what we need to do is right click this and just ungroup all of the objects. Then it means we can select these little parts, these little white bits in here and just delete those ones out. Okay, great. And if I then select my curves, I'm just going to quickly delete the original there that was just sat in behind. There's an option when you image trace as to whether you want to keep the original or not. I, I forgot to, to click that I wanted to delete it. So if I left hand click here to remove the fill, right hand click to specify that as our cut line, we've now got a cut line that would meet up nicely with the outside of our design, albeit not quite perfectly because of how the image trace has happened. If we wanted to bring that in a touch, we could then just use our contour effect to bring it in by 0.5 of a millimeter, for example, and that will then ensure that we've got our nice accurate cut line that sat inside our original design. So that's that's everything that I'm gonna cover off today, guys, in terms of um, Illustrator, Coral, and some design basics.